Will Donald J. Trump ever be held to account? It's a question I find myself asking almost day after day. Right now, there's a lot going on that could provide some grounds for optimism, including in Georgia, which I'll come to in a moment. But first, some really big news. The House Select Committee investigating 1-6 has secured a crucial new witness to testify before the panel, and it's a pretty key figure. Pat Cipollone, the White House counsel to then-President Trump, and who we know now pushed back behind the scenes against Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. He is the new witness. A source familiar with the situation tells NBC News. Cipollone intends to comply with the subpoena, which has been extended until Friday, and his interview with the committee will be videotaped. It's a big deal because the committee believes Cipollone could have critical testimony to share. He was uh, witness to major moments throughout Trump's coup attempt and was in the West Wing on January the 6th. This week, the committee announced that there will be another public hearing next Tuesday at 10 a.m., so perhaps we'll see some of his testimony then. We'll be covering it live, of course, here on MSNBC on Peacock. But with all the focus on what's happening in Washington, D.C., it's important to also remember that there is an active criminal investigation into Trump and his allies some 600 miles south of the nation's capital in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's really heating up. Remember Trump's 2nd of January 2021 phone call to the Georgia Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, the one that would have, without a doubt, landed you or me in prison if we had made a call like that? Here's a short refresher. Why wouldn't you want to find the right answer, Brad, instead of keep saying that the numbers are right? So, look, uh, can you get together tomorrow? And, Brad, we just want the truth. It's simple. The and the, tr the real truth is I won by 400,000 votes, at least. So, what, so what are we going to do here, folks? I only need eleven thousand votes, fellas. I need eleven thousand votes. Give me a break. Hmm. It doesn't seem like the Fulton grand jury convened as part of the ongoing investigation into Trump's potential criminal interference in the 2020 election is inclined to give him a break. This phone call has been the focus of that investigation, made to the man in charge of overseeing Georgia's elections, the Republican Secretary of State. And NBC News has confirmed that the Georgia grand jury has now subpoenaed key members of Trump's inner circle and his legal team, including Rudy Giuliani. Yes, Rudy, Trump's personal lawyer at the time. He falsely testified before Georgia's Senate panel in December 2020, claiming election workers were pulling out suitcases of fraudulent ballots. He was later suspended from practicing law in New York, in part because of that absurd testimony. But it's not just Giuliani also being summoned is someone whose name you've also heard repeatedly during the January 6th committee's public hearings. The grand jury also wants to hear from lawyer John Eastman, who was advising Trump on how to try and overturn the election using the shoddiest of shoddy arguments. In fact, Eastman's role was so central to everything that went down that you'll remember this is what White House lawyer Eric Hirschman told the January 6th committee that he told Eastman on January the 7th after the attack on the Capitol. I said to him... Are you out of your effing mind? Right? I said, I said, I only want to hear two words coming out of your mouth from now on. Orderly transition. And I screamed, I said, I don't want to hear any other effing words coming out of your mouth, no matter what, other than orderly transition. Repeat those words to me. And I screamed, and he said, eventually he said, orderly transition. I said, good, John. Now I'm going to give you the best free legal advice you're ever getting in your life. Get a great effing criminal defense lawyer. You're going to need it. That must have been a fun conversation. I mean, I would have enjoyed it. Also being subpoenaed is former traffic court lawyer Jenna Ellis, one of the most notorious attorneys working with Giuliani in the weeks between the election and January the 6th. Ellis is so beloved by proponents of the big lie that Doug Mastriano, the Trump loyalist, who was filmed at the Capitol on January the 6th and is now running for governor of Pennsylvania, has tapped Ellis as his senior legal advisor. Also receiving a subpoena is conservative lawyer Cleta Mitchell, who was on that critical January 2021 phone call where Trump asked Raffensperger to find him 11,000 plus votes. She's currently working with a well-funded network of organizations on the right, including the RNC. According to the New York Times, recruiting election conspiracists into an organized cavalry of activists monitoring elections. There's also Kenneth Cheeseborough. He's an attorney who worked with the Georgia GOP to coordinate a list of alternative Republican electors who might be willing pro to provide the necessary votes for Trump. Hmm. 
And let's not forget this. The grand jury also subpoenaed Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican of South Carolina. Yeah, you remember Lindsey Graham. One of Trump's top allies in the Senate, one of his golfing buddies even now, who made his own phone calls to Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. The grand jury says it wants to talk to Graham because he, quote, possesses unique knowledge concerning the substance of the telephone calls, the circumstances surrounding his decision to make the telephone calls, the logistics of setting up the telephone calls. Graham has called these subpoenas a fishing expedition and all politics. But, of course, Graham is also the guy who loudly shouted on the night of 1-6 that he was done with Trump. How did that work out for him? Look, the truth is that these subpoenas are the closest the grand jury has gotten to the Trump campaign or the former president's inner circle. And it's one of the few insights, peaks, we've gotten into this key criminal investigation. It's been led by Fulton County District Attorney Fonny Willis, who launched the criminal probe in February of 2021. Now, it's impossible to know whether this probe will lead to criminal charges being brought in Georgia against Donald Trump himself. Willis will have to prove any charges beyond a reasonable doubt before the county can charge the former president. But we do know Trump is really at risk of being charged with multiple crimes, like criminal solicitation to commit election fraud, intentional interference with performance of election duties, conspiracy to commit election fraud, criminal solicitation and state RICO violations. If you want to know how worried Trump is about his criminal exposure in Georgia versus at the federal level, well, think about this. He hasn't said much about Merrick Garland, the attorney general, but he did put out a post on his social media site calling Fonnie Willis, quote, a radical left Democrat prosecutor from Georgia who's presiding over one of the most crime-ridden and corrupt places in the U.S. I don't know about you, but the former guy sounds worried to me. Joining me now to discuss this is Ense Ufa, CEO of the New Georgia Project, a nonprofit working on voting rights and expanding voter access, and MSNBC legal analyst Bob McQuaid. She's a former U.S. attorney with the Eastern District of Michigan and currently teaches at the University of Michigan Law School. Thank you both for joining me. Ense, we've all been following the House Committee's investigation into January 6th. It's been very public recently. We haven't had that much news recently around the Fulton County grand jury investigation, but these new subpoenas are pretty high profile. They're a big deal, not just in Georgia. Absolutely. Um, when this news broke yesterday, the first thing that came to my mind immediately was Lizzo's uh, summer banger. It's about damn time. Right, that we <laughs> have been having to live through this since January 6th, that, uh, you know, our eyes didn't deceive us, our ears haven't deceived us. M many Americans saw the attack on the Capitol. Many Americans heard the January 2nd phone call. And, uh, you know, and it's about damn time that these members of the Republican yes. Criminal Caucus uh, have been subpoenaed. So we know what they knew and when and what it is that they were trying to do, as well as the disgraced former president of the United States. Yeah, I mean, it's been over 18 months and we are still waiting for clear accountability. Bob, the grand jury in Georgia has issued these subpoenas, but it might be hard for the prosecutors to actually secure testimonies from Giuliani and Eastman and Ellis and Mitchell, etc. They may argue attorney-client privilege, just as John Eastman did when he refused to hand over evidence to the House Select Committee. That's going to be a challenge for prosecutors in Georgia, isn't it? No doubt, <clears throat> attorney-client privilege, as well as potentially Fifth Amendment privilege uh, against self-incrimination. But I would imagine that if attorney-client privilege is asserted, that Fannie Willis will do exactly what uh, Congress did in California, which is to assert the crime-fraud exception. That is, the attorney-client privilege cannot be used as a shield to prevent disclosure of evidence of crimes occurring. And so, uh, in that case, the judge found that it was more likely than not that John Eastman and Donald Trump had conspired to violate the law. And so, similarly, I imagine that Fannie Willis could put up the same kind of evidence to try to use that exception to uh, obtain their testimony. And, Bob, NBC's Blaine Alexander spoke with Fannie Willis in her first interview since this indictment. She didn't rule out subpoenaing Trump himself. Have a listen. Might we see a subpoena of the former president himself? Uh, anything is possible. So we're not ruling it out. It is possible to... Get Absolutely. Something. Is that a reasonable possibility or is that just completely unlikely? I think it's possible. You know, actually, more often than not, targets of investigation are not called before the grand jury because it is considered sort of improper just to bring them in solely so that they can assert their Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination. But in a case like this where intent matters so much, when he said, I want you to find me 11,000 votes, is it because he was pressuring Brad Raffensperger to cheat, 
or was it because he believed he legitimately had more than 11,000 votes and he was just asking him to correct a grave injustice? Really, the only person who knows the answer to that question is Donald Trump himself. So in many ways, I could imagine her wanting to secure that testimony, but I'd be surprised if she actually gets it because of his Fifth Amendment, though it would put him in an awkward position to have to assert it after he has said so frequently and so publicly that only criminals take the Fifth. Many. Bob, can normally I also I'm, point out? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring you in in one second, and say I just want to make one quick point to Bob. Bob, okay. I normally agree with every word you say, but when you say only Donald Trump knows, I'm going to jump out on a limb and say, no, I think we all know that Donald Trump wanted to cheat. But that's just... But Fair I know enough. nobody's subpoenaing me to say that, but I'm happy to say that on my show. And say, come in, you want to say something? Yes, I just wanted to point out that I think it's also kind of in, important that Senator Lindsey Graham has already announced that he intends to not comply with the subpoena and not participate, uh, despite the fact that we all know that he called Georgia's Secretary of State and attempted to bully him, not once, but twice. He's neither a Georgia legislator. He's not, yeah. uh, from what I understand, any in any attorney-client privileged relationship. Uh, and so I'm trying to understand what the grounds are for this sitting senator from another state uh, to resist uh, participating in the grand jury process. What's become clear over the last 18 months is that for a lot of elected Republicans, subpoenas are for other people, not for us. Uh, and say, I just want to play another part of the interview with the DA, with Fonnie Willis. Blaine Alexander of NBC News asked her about threats that she's been receiving. Have a listen. You talked about getting, drawing ire and threats. Have you gotten threats specifically because of your investigation into the former president? Yes, and a lot of racist comments. It's foolishness. But I know I'm a black woman. I'm proud to be a black woman. So insulting me with racial slurs is maybe it entertains them. It's of no consequence to me. And so she also mentioned how she's had to increase her security because of this investigation. I mean, I mentioned to Bob a moment ago, realistically, will we ever see a, a, a former president testifying in such a way, let alone a former president going to prison, in any scenario, a prosecutor who decided to go after a former president would be a controversial figure. When you're going after someone with, like Donald Trump, who has some pretty extreme followers, you are really risking your life, literally, not just your career. Absolutely. It is prosecutors. It is civil servants and little old ladies working elections. It's activists and organizers and people who dare to, again, communicate what our eyes are all seeing, that these are not victimless crimes. I know that there's the tale that says uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words won't hurt. Words absolutely do hurt from a former president inciting violence and a violent yes. murderous riot uh, on January. January 6th to some of the other examples that these these words do have an impact um, and must be addressed as we're thinking about how to conduct elections moving forward and how to maintain our democracy, how we live together, how we hold together society. Like, it's absolutely important that we protect the truth, that the, the wells yes. of information that we get, uh, that we learn about the world around us uh, be protected from misinformation and disinformation. Words absolutely matter. And, Bob, last question to you. We learned uh, on Wednesday that Pat Cipollone, the White House counsel to then-President Donald Trump, a man who we now know pushed back, internally at least, against efforts to overturn the election and incite a riot, he's going to be testifying uh, in front of the 1-6 Select Committee this week, likely Friday. If you were on that panel, what would you be asking him? Well, I'd very much want to know what was happening on January 6th. Remember that Cassidy Hutchinson said, he said words to the effect of, um, we have to keep him from going to the Capitol. If he goes to the Capitol, we will all be charged with every crime imaginable. What was he talking about there? What were all the crimes imaginable? And yeah. why did he say that? What was the basis for that? Also, he was a witness to what he called the murder-suicide pact, when there was thought about replacing the acting attorney general with someone who would execute his plan to uh, use the Justice Department to perpetuate lies about fraud. I would be talking very much about those two things. I'd be focused on, on all of those.